Oh, hi there. Guy is up in northern Tennessee working on this 1973 Pontiac Catalina wine mixer. I don't think it's the wine mixer edition, but it's a Pontiac. I'm told it's been off the road no less than 10 years. So we're gonna try to get this thing fired up and drive it 150 miles back home. Seems fine. Nope, definitely not. Look at the square body back here. I don't know anything about this car at all. This is the first time I'm seeing it. I'm told it's got a 400 under the hood and it's just, I don't know, it's a classic Pontiac. It's worth saving for sure. It actually looks pretty good just glancing at it real quick, but you know the deal. Let's walk around this thing, discover what we got going on, do some automobile archeology, span if you will. And then I gotta get wrenching on this thing. I'm getting a late start in the afternoon. We've still got 150 miles to go. I can already see we've gotta put tires on this and some other things, let alone see if it runs, drives, moves, and maybe stops. But brakes are generally a casual maybe. They're not, you know, it's, it's an option. All right, let's walk around this. Does this have a vinyl top? I think it did. One of the first things I see right away is you know, the old 400 badge. Pontiac was just killing the styling and looks department here in late 60s, early 70s. Even though this is a 73, still not a bad looking car. The front clip's been replaced. That's probably the most obvious thing to see right away, but I mean, it's pretty solid. Look at all this. You can definitely see that it's been sitting a very long time. You can see where this tire must leak down. It was rolled back into this bullpen, but these tires are all dry rotted, cracked, or shot. A little bit of rust right there. Nothing terrible. A little spot right there. I could see remnants of a respray. You know, professional paint job. Lost the receipts, most likely. Hasn't been clobbered back here. Got all the trim on it. Bumper's pretty decent. These are those old school dangerous slots in the bumper for the jack that would hook in here. And you'd jack your car up and your jack would be at like a 43 degree angle and then you would just NASCAR your tire on and off as fast as possible before this just collapsed and pinched your leg off. So that's pretty neat. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. This has been boogered into. We should probably check that out at some point. No hail damage or nothing on this. Just a lot of dirt and grime. Similar rust condition over here. Just a tiny wee bit. But that's more of a speed hole than anything. It ain't even quite to weight reduction stage. And we got a Dean Alpha Omega 365 sun and the, the rain and the wheat fields and snow tire so that's a pretty good unit there multi-season got snails putting some interstates on the glass here looking pretty good rocker panels are in decent shape so it must have got a front end booger this does have a dent right there i guess it's hard to tell because it's so uh, faded. Must have been that original cream color and then they primered it black it looks like. Would be my guess. Here's what saved this car. It used to be a vinyl top. I'm gonna say white. You can tell because of the way that it is. But they took it off. So none of this rotted out. See debris and water can make its way underneath of that. And this didn't get just rotted like most vinyl. I like vinyl tops. They're just, they're dangerous if you ain't taking care of a rig. That is for sure. That's been siliconed up there. 
looks like the weather stripping is pretty well shot but overall it's a nice solid Pontiac I think the first place we should start is back in the trunk you guys have heard me say this many times but I like to start in the trunk so I could just mentally prepare for what's about to happen as an example do I need to find a motel right now because if there is one head and a pair of head gaskets back there it's gonna be a long day you know what I mean and if you're lucky there ain't nothing you know what I mean maybe just some mountain sodas that'd be nice some new parts that just aren't on I don't know let's go find out just rained here for 57,000 days so that's that's great got my Pontiac key out oh word okay well yeah oh what quick break Quaker State okay we got mouse levels just went up yeah this is where probably the seat cushions went uh oh I see a digital clicky clacker hanging on back there we got some front end apparels. We got a boom boom. Warren G would be proud. Fan motor's been replaced or just missing. One of the two. So that's fine. I knew it. It's just, it's got that look on it. One, oh no, we do got a set of brake pads just in case. Steering component. Okay. Well, the good news is. Nothing engine-ish looking. And in fact, I think we're just gonna kind of slowly back away from all of that and just uh, pretend we didn't see it. Oh, I think the guy's gonna slide in here. It's time. See what we got going on. Yeah. It's really, it's really nice that it just rained and it's uh, super humid and hot. Okay. <coughs> yeah, it smells like a cigar box full of acorns and fly wings. There's also a severe amount of mold on the door panels and seats. So we'll ignore that. I guess I'll put that in the... Sure. Oh, wow. I love the controls in here, though. This thing is sweet. Catalina! Wood grains. This was a gentleman's car. You know, like something like you come from the bank from your third mortgage, then you slip down to the tavern and brag about it. That's this rig right here. <laughs> it's slick. Look how sharp that door panel is. I should make sure I'm right on the gear here. Yep, July 73. A little bit of, oh, that's just surface rust. Doors are in pretty good shape yet. This is a solid car. There's the ridge color. There's the not so ridge color. They were close. You can't even tell. If you just squint and look away, it's the same. Okay, look at this. Catalina. They got the mirror. <laughs> oh good, that works. Let's just go ahead and leave that down. It must have been parked up by some trees or in some tall grass or something. Water leaking on the inside here. Bunch of mold stuff in there. Look at the pedals though. This is a fairly low mile car. I can tell you that right now. Ooh, boosters. Nope. I don't know what that is. That vent right there needs to come back into automobiles. You guys know what I'm talking about. But look at this overall. Nice wood grain all the way around. Seats look to be in halfway decent shape. Just got to get them cleaned up. That's pretty... There's been some moisture in here. Look at the wheel. It's uh, There's some sort of science that happens to these wheels. They delaminate or something when they get hot. And then they turn into a sticky mess like this one there. 
back seat looks to be in really good shape. Just needs to be cleaned. There ain't a rip in it. I don't think, anyway. Tilt. Go. Oof. Oofta. Yeah, that's in great shape. Just kick that thing out and pressure wash it. Headliner is almost all, well it is actually, it's just the sail panels over there. Got a little saggy, that's all right. It's pretty good, little baby diaper in the back, but not bad, not bad at all. Seat belt looks brand new. That ain't ever even been worn, if I'm gonna be honest. How many miles does it say? 98,000, that could maybe be, tape player. Sony is the says synthesizer tuner. Wow. That's pretty nice. AC car, obviously. But no power or anything else. I'm not even sure what the options were for that. This is cool. Body by Fisher. Let's see if we can get the other side open. I'm digging the saddle blanket seat cover that barely fits. I wonder what's underneath it. I think the bottom just got deleted on. Door test. Look at that. Body by Fisher. Be convenient if they both, oh, look at that, they both open. Oof. Okay. <coughs> nice action on the windows. Oh. Boy, the styling back then, you just, you couldn't beat it. It's kind of a Monte Carlo-esque kind of driver situation. Oh, goodness. Okay. Well, she burns oil. And nothing else in there, it doesn't look like. Okay, proper gasoline. This vehicle is designed to operate on a leaded or low leaded fuels of at least 91 research octane. Noted. Okay. Oh, we got an ignition stick. Well, still doesn't run. I guess we haven't done anything yet. But I'd say this is probably a 98,000 mile car. Based on that and the seat. Armrest needs cleaned, but it ain't blowed out, you know. So, that's pretty incredible. 1973, I would say, probably legitimately, 100,000 mile car. Well, it's time to get under the power barn, see what we got. Okay, let's see what's in the power barn here. Right in the retinas, yes! Oh, we got completed. Whoa. We might got some speed parts. There's stickers everywhere. We got boom tubes, some sort of intake. This thing might be hopped up more than a bunny farm. I'll be dipped. It looks complete. I mean, it, it might even have a holly film I could have in here. I've never had I've never had this happen with the speed parts. Hope it's not blown up. Huh. Let me show you what we got here. So, you guys know the deal with the Steel Me stickers, or the Go Fast Horsepower badges. They're either legit or someone just collecting on them. You know what I mean? But this one, I'm seeing Holly. Yep, I'm seeing MSD. Could it have a crane cam? Doubtful, very, so that's good. Boy, this thing has been sitting a while. Gonna have to clean all that out if it does run, otherwise we're gonna get a fire under here. There's where the mice were sleeping, or that's the restroom, I guess. But we got Excel lightning hoses, looks like. I think I saw a Holly hiding out underneath there. Huh, definitely looks like a 400. And completage. It's all here, power brakes, power steering. AC pump's been deleted on. 
I would normally be hanging out here and it's impossible to get to the the uh, sparkulators with that bracket in the way. Mr. Gasket header gaskets. Nice. We're off to a good start. Yep. 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 Here's the plan. I don't have one whatsoever. But there are a few things I know a guy is going to need to do here. First of all, let's make sure this engine still rotates. If moisture creeps up the exhaust or into the fuel, make it happener. It's very easy to get ring ridges, stuck valves, things like that when cars sit, especially when they sit in a poor environment or somewhere with a lot of moisture, like tall grass, which is my biggest fear of them all. All, all, all. No, it's, it's up there. It's not the biggest, though. If the thing rotates, we'll probably pull a sparkulator or three, maybe six or all eight out, scan the peepers on them, get an idea of how it was running when it was parked and what kind of condition the engine's in. And then we got to get sparkles out of this thing, make sure we got spark. And then fuel delivery, who knows what the fuel tank is looking like. Confirmed it's there at least. That's good. I'm not even sure if it's on a mechanical pump or a digital one. We did see one rolling around in the trunk there. And then we'll dump some fire maker down this thing. Hopefully here it bark off. And if it does, then we can invest the time and money into a couple parts and pieces, probably change on the Earl, spruce it up, clean it up a little bit, and then check the shift machine, brakes, home. That's the plan anyway. I'm already getting hungry and I ain't missing dinner tonight. I'll tell you that much. I'm gonna use the charging whirler up here because I ain't got a socket with them big enough to go in the crank snout, okay? Yep. It moved a little. There it goes. Oh yeah, she's rotating. I'm squishing some spider nests down there. The charging where has been replaced. Probably right before it was parked, looks like. I'm trying to find a date down there and it's not telling me. I always try to confirm how long these have been sitting if possible. Well, the engine rotates, so that's 78.3697% of the battle. Guy's gonna move on to pulling some sparkulators out. See what's in here. Oh, wow. See what? <coughs> this can't be real. We might not be taking the sparkulators out because if I snap this one off, jeez, oh, they were torqueulated to 715 foot-pounds. Yeah, richer than Elon. But she was running. Let's pull out another one. Just, we need a larger sample base. <coughs> That's ridiculous. <coughs> Come on now. That one is drastically different than that one. So that's good. Well, you can see here, one is rich and one is lean in their neighbors. So kind of an uneven health status right now, but it was running. They're not fouled up. They're not bent up or anything like that. I think I'll just stick them back in. Once we hear it make some noise, then I can decide if I'm gonna put 30 bucks of sparkulators in or not. Let's get the air filtration system off, see what we got going there. Jam these back in quick first. I'm gonna put the fouled one back where it seemed to be hitting cleaner. Auto clean. It's like throwing a dirty dish in a dishwasher. Just ignore it. It'll fix itself. Hope we don't have the dreaded Pontiac timing chain issue. Yeah. Okay. I wonder where I could put that hardware so I could lose it. Somewhere over here. Oh yeah, we got a Holly. Vacuum secondary, single pumper, Manuel Chocuses. Yeah, 
it ain't locked up. Fuel line is really, really brittle. Super brittle. And I believe that's going direct to the old steel fuel line, so it's going to be on a digital pump, fellers. I wondered, see, here we are now. Okay, all the hardware is in it. Kind of just looking things over from mouse chewed wires, especially with this MSD stuff. That switch in there might have been for either the electric fuel pump or this digital spark shooter box. This is an older guy. Multi spark discharges. Sure. That seems to be, oh, we got a little chew right there. Seems to be plugged in right. But I don't know. Should we test that first? Sparkles? Actually, we need to back all the way up, put a battery in this thing, first of all. See if it turns the starter. Make sure the starter's good. Then we can move on to sparkles. Get out of here! Here's a closer look at the fuel make it happener. I believe. Well, let's take a look. Let's say 186. No, it must be 1850. Dash two, so that's gonna be a 600 CFM, and like I say, it's it's got the manual choke, which is frozen, and uh, she's just a single pumper, vacuum secondary, and this brittle hose right here runs right down into this. So I'm gonna say digital pump. Yep, this has been, it's hard to see, but there's a block off plate. It's even chrome even. Six horsepower. No, probably not. Good luck, guys. This is really fast, but you still can't drive it. Okay. Oh, here you go. 1999. Long Beach, California. Huh. So anyway, let's go ahead and get a different battery in here. And we're going to do my favorite. Start going through all the digitals. Now, please, favorite by far. Very specific reason I went with this battery. No, it was just the cheapest. It's got, it's got top posts on it right there. Okay. Like a glove. Um, I wonder if I should hook up Earth first. Let the sad guy win for once. Ooh, it's snapping. Something is drawn. Powers. Headlights on? No. Okay, well that's let's listen for for fire sounds, sizzles and smokes. I could do got one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven wires coming off to alternate. Oh, they're, wow. They're powering the MSD straight from the alternator. That's classy because, the, you know, it's too far to go to the positive post right here. Also, I just noticed talking to you over there that the dang old hood light is on and that's probably what's, what's drawing power. That's neat. We might have to rewire this, this box. I believe in the instructions it says, do not take power from charge on where we're. Warning, warning, do not. I'll show you what I got going on here. This one I can get pretty taunt. This devil, I got the nut maxed out on her. Maxed, maxed, maxed. And she's still jiggly like John Goodman's neck, see? So what I'm gonna do here is just take a screw that I found on the ground. I'm gonna run it in right here. And it's gonna spread this out enough and make a tight connection there. Fixed for free. Okay. There we go. Yeah! 
Oh yeah. Now, when the car starts to light on fire, we gotta remember to get the root driver out, to get the screw out, cause we're not gonna get it discoed fast enough and she's gonna burn down and I guess we're just gonna have to hitchhike is what I'm saying. Well, before a guy goes cranking on this like a water well, we ought to make sure there's some lubrication in the bottom end in case starter gets stuck and she runs away from us. The beforehand mentioned electroelectricity connections. Okay. Well, it's got Earl in it. It is not 5.30 as suggested by the glove box, so this is, um, this is standard issue 1030 conventional, but it's in there. I think I'm going to run heavier though. Well, it's not terrible. It's good enough. We can crank this thing and probably even run it for a few minutes. Ain't worried about that at all. While I'm here, what do we got in the ice cube boiler? There's juice in there. Sliding busted out and the freeze plugs in the block must be in there and the lower rat hose must not leak too bad. We're moving right along. Both the belts need replaced. Gonna ignore that. Charging whirler is at like a 97 degree angle. I'm just gonna lean like now it's straight right there. So that's fine. Okay. Oh, that's gonna be an issue. We can fix that though. The coil wire is chewed up by the Mises. All right, I'm gonna jump in, twist on the ignition stick. What we're hoping for is the wiring from said ignition stick through the column, throughout the vehicle to the starter and all that is intact and the starter in fact works. The flywheel isn't missing 48 teeth. It rotates the engine over. We don't hear anything knocking, banging and clanking or it just goes ka-chug. That would not be good. This looks like a pretty hot little motor for someone just to give up on. You know what I mean? It's got a guy scratching my brain bucket a little bit. All right, gonna jump in the wine mixer here. Get some unknown disease from the seat and crank on the starter there. See what happens, no tilt, unfortunately. All right. It does have a digital pump. Listen, shh, turn it up a little, shh. Yeah, you can't hear that. It's in the back. Cranks, oil light works, brake light works, digital pump works. Radio does not work, disappoint, very disappoint. Okay, well, that's all great news so far. Stop parking your cars under trees, fellers and fellettes. It's terrible for them. This poor thing. These cows rot out, then you're in a world of hurt, believe you me. So a guy threw it in my little blinky light doodab or spark tester. And you guys are going to watch in here, and if we got sparkles, that light bulb should blink every time it's hitting over here on this wire. So I'll go crank on it. You guys watch that right there. Well, what'd you see? Yeah, okay, blinked a couple times. We got sparkles. That's great news. Yeah, I know. I heard it too. Got a little gallop in her, but listen, it could come back around. These rings have been sitting a long time. Sometimes you just gotta get them out and blow the cobwebs out of them. I'll bring them back around just fine. What I'm talking about is turning it over there. You know, it did the <laughs> You know, one horse is slower than the other, basically. Not too worried about it. Okay, rotates, spark. Let's go ahead and work on fuel. I'm going to find a funnel somewhere around here or something. There's stuff and pipes and things. I got five gallons of bad lawnmower gas from three years ago in a dirty jug. I'm going to pour that in. So at least we know something is in the tank and then we can start accessorizing 
what is coming out. We got a pump somewhere. I could probably crawl under somewhere there and try to figure that out too, just so we know what we have. And there should be a fill tray somewhere too, hopefully, along the lines. Otherwise, we'll just have to splice one in. Red Rider, guy shock. Okay, so yeah, here we are above the axle and some really old clicky clacky with some superb wiring up there goes into that severely kinked fuel line into this crazy looking fuel filter i don't know if i've ever even seen one like that into this other kinked fuel line up into this crusty line that goes on top of the tank so that's good it's got a chrome transmission pan and blowed out mufflers. And I see some wire hanging up that muffler. So I think I've already worked on this car. I'm just trying to remember when it was. My knees and my back are soaked. Well, here's what we got going on. I got the clamp that's supposed to hold the pump with the zip tie that was zip tied to the brake line to another zip tie off because it wasn't doing anything this is the filter i've never seen it does make a cool noise it's got 13 clamps on it and it's been kinked in half and that side went into a 5 16 inlet on the failure to use filter with pump will void warranty thing that came out into a smaller fitting to 5 16 to an airline coupler to a female to female brass fitting to a threaded to 3 8 coupling to another clamp over to the other side that was kinked into the pump. Okay, listen. I think we're just going to start over. This pump is pumping, but it probably only worked about as far as I could throw a barrel of whiskey, which is only about 300 yards, you know. <clears throat> And we got a bunch of $48 in different fittings here. I think I could just get in one of those Edel Broken clicky clackies that come with the 3/8 fittings already on it and a fill tray. See where I'm going here? And I could just boop, plug the two together and we have 3/8 all the way up front and we'll be getting the correct pressure. This plastic snapped off in that. I think a guy can even pick up an extra pre filter on those. So if in we plug it, we could swap that out quick. We might even have to run a filter in front of that because of how the filter's got to sit down below. It's doing this. And then if I just put the same fittings on, we should be good, theoretically. Okay, so I'm gonna run down to the parts store, get a 3 8 5 16 fuel lines, clamp laters, a clicky clacky, get this buttoned up. The good news here is the tank looks like it's been replaced 15 years ago, maybe. Um, it's newish or looking, but it's dented and smashed and definitely tarnished and varnished, but it's not the original tank. So that gives me a lot of hope that we're not going to be sucking up a bunch of crud, hopefully, because 150 miles. If it's plugging every 20, it's gonna be a long night. Speaking of, we're losing daylight. Ooh, I need to get a funnel for the gas tank thing. Okay, plan, sure. Is that a Blue Jay? Well, I'm back with some parts here. I've got this put in, and see, this is gonna help take care of all this mess. I got the right size fittings, and then I just made sure the digital connectors were the same as what was already in there. So when I crawl underneath and I get stuff in my retinas, I should be able just to plug these in really quick. Just need to plan the new path of all of this stuff and figure out what to zip tie it to. Throw some clamps on it and hopefully we get this fuel system back here tied up. So I got the pump hanging here and I got a line stubbed up to where, <laughs> to where it goes forwarder. And I think I'm gonna run this pump up like this, zip tie it to that brake line and then swoop this one in from the other side and try to keep it kinking. And I am going to gamble with this little fill tray because look at the tank. That's what I'm saying. It's standing up and stuff, but I think it's, well, it's obviously been replaced. The question is how long ago, but it's bone dry. I 
don't think there's going to be a lot of rust and rot in there, hopefully. I mean, if it works, is it a dumb idea? You know, technically, I use two zip ties, so that's professional right there. Now we'll just turn the key and see if it fires up. Hit that key, and I tell you what, I can hear that thing running like O.J. Simpson, so we're good there. I'm going to go ahead and dump some fuel on this thing now, see if we can get it to push fuel up front. This is the downside to BOPC life, is funnels and this and that to try to get on the fuel. I was rooting around for some stuff back here to try to get a 90 or 45 so I didn't spill all this fuel. And I ended up asking the filler, Donnie, you know, here, you know Donnie. Yes, you do. He uh, had one of these things and apparently you just shake this. Oh, yeah. And there it goes. It's now fueling. Hear that? I'll be dipped. I'm going to have to start carrying one of these, and I ain't kidding you. Boy, it's going quick. Huh. It's already down to here. Yeah, it's only been going for 30, 45 seconds. That's the way to do it. Okay, we've got 4.96 gallons of fuel in here, but before we go cranking on this thing, I think I want to go ahead and replace... Well, that's vacuum. This guy here is so brittle. I think that's just going to be an issue at some point anyway. So I'm just going to get in here, tear that out, and replace it. And before we plug her into the fuel making happener, I'll just have it hanging here. We'll turn the key on and make sure we get fuel coming and what it looks like. And then we can plug it in and see how bad shape that thing's in. Some of you are really shocked right now because I believe I just said, let's fix a problem before it's a problem. You know, it wasn't but 10 years ago, I would wait till the flames were just boiling out from underneath the hood. Then I'd be like, oh, something's not good. Listen, fire ain't nothing to play with. That's for sure, and this car is too good to burn down. So let's get this out the way. Plus, I wanted to leave before dark, which means we're definitely not leaving before dark. So... I don't want to be messing with this on the side of the highway with no lights because I don't plan or prepare for that either. So <laughs> that's fine. Okay, wrestle that side out. Yatsa! Cut this side out. Sure, mazel. Go right ahead. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Keep these clamps. Some are expensive. Is that three eighths? Oh, it is three eighths. Okay. I think I got a stick of that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh, that one's all boogered up, actually. Is this one built up too? Probably. Yeah, it ain't no good. Did a guy bring any clamps? Well, I don't know, Clarence. Oh, I did. Oh, I'm glad you picked these up. Well, you said whenever you get hose, get some clamps. Huh. Well, you were right. You were. Okay, now... Can a guy get this in? Without kinking it off? I think so. I'm gonna try. Boy, that would be cool if this thing really was cammed. Wouldn't it? It would. Uh, all right. Then run this up like that. Yeah, Steven Seagal that off. Now let's sit this right here, and we're gonna see if we get fuel coming out of that.
Palms running. Come on. Come on. Nothing. Oh, I hear it trying. Might have to coax her along. Hope the pickup screen isn't plugged. This doesn't leak, it's fighting against the pump. Maybe I gotta let the rear of the car down. I'm glad that didn't do anything. It's just not reaching fuel. Just wind. Pickup tube broken off? Can't be. I'm gonna shoot some juice backwards in this. Try to prime that pump a little bit. Get some velocity adhesions at the molecular chemical stage. <laughs> Boy, this juice is tart. Oh yeah. See if I can push this back. Okay, now let's see. Boy, it just ain't quite there. Huh, I don't like that. Well, she ain't suckalizing from the fuel incubator back there. Before we get too excited about that though, let's hear this thing run. I don't want to put any more time and money into this thing unless it fires off. So I'm gonna get some uh, weed whacker gas. I got that around here somewhere. I'm gonna prime up the carbs, do that through the vent tube there, a little down the app, and we're gonna twist the key and Hopefully this thing fires off and does not knock. That'd be nice. What have we got today? We're running with 40 to one. Guy likes a little bit of two stroke fuel or the two stroke oil more precisely. Just in case these rigs don't fire up. Number one, you're not washing the rings down. Gives us a little bit of lubrication Whoops, that was way too much. Perfect. And it's not so hard on them. About the worst thing a guy could do is get in here with a brake cleaner or carb cleaner and just hose this thing down. Okay, it's plenty of fuel. Let me take this sparkle tester out of line. We know we got spark. It should just bang right off. Come on now, do the thing. Fired? There it goes. There it is. He's running. Boy, that charger where that looks miserable. That fuel make it happen or it might make it happen. 
It's alive. She's a runner. Severe exhaust leaks. It's not even really smoking. A little bit, but that's probably the fuel, you know. That's gonna be an issue. Huh. Well, that's fantastic news. She's a runner. Now we can better address that fuel issue. If we can get fuel supply, we got her made. Well, I'm gonna add some more fuel. Try this first. I mean, I've done it before where you replace the tank and you find out that the pickup tube is messed up. The screen, so you shorten that. There we go. And you just tell yourself, well, I'll remember that. Got a new tank, that's a win. We'll just have to remember that. You have to put a little bit more fuel in it because it won't reach the bottom. At least that's what I'm hoping is going on here. If this doesn't work, we'll have to go to a different fuel source, I think. Rather than drop this tank out here in the squishy mud stuff. Trying her now. So far, a lot of the same. Mike could crawl under there quick and try to get some fuel up to the pump. Make sure that's flowing decent and then reconnect it. Well, here's the thing, fellers and fellas. We've danked around at this point and wasted a bunch of time. I'm gonna go old school. I'm just gonna get some fuel line, throw it out over the fender, throw her in the passenger seat, drop it in a bucket, and we're gonna go home that way. I ain't got the patience right now to drop that tank. We're losing light quick. I got a big old thunderstorm coming in. I don't even know if the lights work because the wipers are none of that. So I'm going to get what I got left of fuel line that I didn't hack up, try to get it into a pail or something, get this thing fired up and see if it'll idle for a few minutes. We got to make sure the head gaskets come around, the thermostat's going to open if anything leaks, all of that stuff. Okay. Did I cut up all of that fuel line? I hope not. I got a chunk here. So here's what I'm looking at, fellers. We're gonna need power for the clicky clacker over here. So we can clicky clack the fuel out of the passenger seat over to the fuel make it happen here. I don't have a bunch of wire and stuff with me. So I started rooting around for power sources. Lo and behold, there was two red wires. That one there and this one here laid up over there. Tested them for power, got nothing. Traced them and sure enough, that's that switch right there that wasn't even being used. So I swung one side over here. So now we got juice there. And if I hook that side into this, we should get clicky clacky. Well, once you know it, switch is bad. So I just looped it over. Now if I ground the pump, pump's working. It's starting to rain and I just checked the radar. There's a nasty, nasty storm headed this way. So this is gonna get really interesting, really quick. Hefty. You know? Okay, so we gotta get, that's, all right. So I'm gonna jump underneath. That's quick change oil on this thing. So that's just done and off the list. Fuel shouldn't be too bad. I'm almost there. We just gotta, what am I gonna do now? I guess I'll hitchhike down and get some gas or something. Throw that in the passenger seat, drop the hose on that, ready to rock. I got a set of tires and wheels already here. We got to bolt those on quick, and then maybe we just slam this thing and drive. The storms are coming. It's going to get really, really nasty, so I got a limited amount of time here to get this wrapped up. Getting these little breaks and no rain, so a guy's been just, you know, whew, I think I just threw my elbow out. Anyway, I got the oil dropped. Wasn't terrible, terrible, but needed changed. Pretty sure the reason this was parked was the fuel issue and someone didn't want to drop the tank again. Going with the old diesel oil, heavy duty Rotella. Teas with the four. It's got all the dinosaurs and vitamins. Good stuff for these flat tappet cams, which I'm assuming this still has. Didn't sound like it was cammed up. I think the crane cam was more of a, you know, feather, feather, belt buckle. You know, look at, look at my engine. 
kind of move. Get this knocked out. Well, I kind of wanted to put fresh sparkulators in it, but on account of the weather, we might try to get some miles down before the hail gets here. Maybe we got naders. I'm not even sure anymore. It's hard to say in Tennessee. Things get, things, cha things change in a hurry around these parts. I'll tell you that much. Okay. Get that off the list. So this little deal, my Bobby, sits on top of those new batteries so they could stack them, you know. Any hoose. A guy cut off one end here with the old Leatherman, and then I zip tied her onto my fuel line here for a couple reasons. One, we want to make sure that the end of the line doesn't get sucked to the bottom of the can, so I left a little extra there. And two, we want this to be straight. So when we drop this into the can, it goes straight down and doesn't do that curl because we're not going to effectively get all of the capacity because if we're going five gallons at a time this is going to be really sketchy on fuel so but you know what if it works is it really a dumb idea let me come over here jam this into here just like that perfect all right clicky clacky's all plugged in let's go ahead and Fire up the pump. All right, that's pulling fuel. Here it's filling the bowl. Carburetor adjustment tool. That seems to be doing good. Let's fire it. See if we get it to idle. Anything in the way of the fan? Yeah, maybe this. Also, I don't need this laying in here, I guess. Okay. Ha! There we go. That's more like it. Oil light came off, brake light stayed on. That seems very normal. There we go. All right, now let's see if it's charging. Do I got a meters? Tell me what you're doing for lightning. I hope you're making some. 14. She's charging lightning. All right. Just gonna let it run for a minute. Fill up, see more. Up. No accelerator pump, but that doesn't surprise me. See what the blood stick says here. What are you saying? I think she's good. It smells like burnt hair, but we'll ignore that. So I'm gonna let it run for a minute. Hopefully come up to temperature. Make sure that we don't have like a rear main seal blown out or bad head gaskets. We're not pumping fluid into the crankcase. Got the idle racked up on her now, trying to get the thermostat to open. There is a little bit of a vacuum leak there. Interesting. Over here too. Sounds pretty good. There it opened.
She's warming up. Water's rising. Borrowed an air hose from the shop here. Try to get some of this stuff out. Before we get a fire. Must be chewing on an acorn. Come on now. Oh, I probably hit it with too much air. We got a leak down there? Shouldn't be doing that way down there. Goodness gracious. Come on, chew on that dirt for Pete's sake. Oh, oh, I can feel a virus entering my body. Oh, word. It's like Uncle Buck's cousin. now. Open up. Got a water pump at some point. That's neat. Now we're going to give her the Italian tuna. She's warmed up, you know. We're going to put some barium and B12 right down the yap. This will clean up the intake runners, valves, Sparkulators. Since we're not going to be changing them, this will knock some of that crud off of them. Let's see what it tells us for brake juice. The lights on on the inside. What's that mean? I don't know. Oh. One's completely empty and one's half empty. Huh. That seems fine. The scary part, a guy's gonna go ahead and throw his earth pounder into the stop later pad here. See what happens. It moves. I wonder why the brake gets there. I mean, it feels like something's there. I don't know what. I'm on the jack right now, but it's just throw it in reverse. Sounded solid. Solid. 
Oh, we definitely have transmission edge. The shift machine is shifting. <coughs> Man, there's... <sighs> so much stuff in the air in here, it's just... concerning. Look at that. It's a Catalina wine mixer. <laughs> I'll be dipped. Decided to save a few more bucks and just, you know. This one wasn't too terrible. As I say that, the cotton is blowing apart in the fill tray. This must be a fram. That would explain a lot. Well, get this put on quick. Put some tires and wheels on this pack. If we head southwest fast enough, we might miss the eye of the storm. This is pretty tossed together here, but I think she's gonna be able to get us home. Well, we just don't know yet, do we? 150 miles, there's a lot that could happen. Well, as far as tires go, all of these are completely dry rotted. They ain't gonna get us 15 miles, let alone 150. So we got a set sitting up here for this rig. Look at this, Avengers and GT. These are like Koopa Cobras. There's a couple different brands that are really similar tread pattern. And these are just steel wheels, powder coated, trim ring, and a nice old school Pontiac. Poverty cap there, the old dog dish in the center. This combo looks great. It's gonna change the whole look of the car. We bust these off quick, get these tires on, and then we gotta scoot. First test drive is just headed home. I really should look at, you know, the wheel bearings. So, I'm not gonna do that. You got to be kidding me. Hmm. Might have to come from the backside. Yeah, I only got one good hoof. Miss my boots terribly. Oh. <laughs> Great things happen when you cut corners, unless it just costs you more time, and then it's super frustrating stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, these haven't been rolled or braked on in many, many moons. Sure. Pass. Check. Well, suppose I gotta... Ugh. Suppose I'm gonna have to scratch up the wheel just to get the cap off. Come on, meow. Well, for crying in the mud, I just haven't seen such a thing. Don't want to dent these. <laughs> well, a guy just did fight 37 and a half hours to get center cap off so I could apply said tire. So here's a new plan, because we're probably gonna blow a wheel bearing or an axle bearing or something. I'm gonna leave those off unless we make it back home. If we make it back home, not only will we pop those bad boys on, but I think we'll run it over to a pressure wash station and wash this thing down and see what it's got hiding underneath all this crud and grime 
now we can see it finished, tires, wheels, with the caps on, and clean paint. Plan. Let me pop the rest of these tires on quick. I gotta finish packing. These are the wrong style lug nuts, so guys borrowing some from the square body over there. They won't be missing one per wheel, right? Yeah, it'll be fine. Yep. Oh, yep. Brakes equally as bad. Okay, ignore that. Looking much more gooder ish. These are those junky beauty covered lug nuts. I hate this style. Okay, barely rotates. Good enough. I was just standing here watching my jack sink in the mud when I realized even the trunk light works. I'll be dipped. Got a big guy down here, almost stepped on him. Well, I guess that does it. I'm gonna jump in. First stop, gas station somewhere. We've gotta to top off our five gallon jug. And then I've gotta get on the pocket computer and start gypsing out a route. We're gonna assume the 400 is gonna get 9.23 miles to the gallon. So we're gonna to have to strategically plan where we're stopping for fuel, all while staying on the back roads and avoiding the storm. That's great. Anyway, let's go. Oh, can't forget my tarp. We might need this. And my trash bag poncho. Here we go, fellas. First time moving under its own power. 10 years. Okay, now. Drive. Oh yeah, she wants to go. Do we dare try the brakes this, this early? Ooh, really spongy. I think I'm kind of safe on those. Might need them a little later, you know? Okay, let's go find a fuel station, pop this thing off. We got all three gears. Oh. 50 miles an hour. Maybe a little nervous on the second. Or the two seconds, third, two to three. She, she hung on there a little bit. Thought maybe the vacuum line came on board. Got a horn. Let's recheck the radio. Everything's fine, okay? First stop, I'm gonna top this thing off all the way to the maximum to where it's just gently spilling out. And then we're gonna go about 40 miles. Well, that's a little more than that. It's like 44 miles, 45 miles to the next stop. And then we can measure 
I'll get a, I get whoop, whoop, get a gauge for how far we can go. Start planning the rest of our fuel routes. Okay. Well, big toes crossed. Let's hit her. Made her to our destination. Cart Haggy. Or this is, I think, that's not the town, but it's, uh, I don't know. Anyway, remember that yellow Corvette like a year or two ago and we put the blower on it right away? Like day two? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's somewhere around here. Car's doing okay ish. Check this out. I got tail lips and Head lips on this, no dash lights or nothing, but look at that. Oh, sweet old rig. I'm a little afraid to hit the high low beam because on GMs, all the power goes through them. Sometimes those switches get a little snotty, and if you mess up, you can get stuck with no lights. So we're just gonna leave them be. She's getting a wash as we're going, but there's still a lot of stuff left on it. You've got a side marker light. Might have to dig into that fuel, make it happen or every time I cross the bridge or hit a bump or anything like that. She's spitting and sputtering. Yeah, I mean, other than that, it's it's cruising pretty good. If it does have an overheating problem, I'm not aware. We've been driving through rain nonstop and it's nice and cool out. Maybe that's a good thing. No wipers, they're not working. And we made it just in the nick of time. We're definitely getting right at nine or 10 miles to the gallon. So. Gonna fill this up. Global position sensor up on the ditch pocket box. Another fuel stop. I think at this point we got to start cutting across on the two lanes. But we're making the way so far. Completely normal. Nothing to uh, nothing to see here. This little town has a self-serve spray wash. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get all the years of grime and moss and lichkins, lichkins, everything off of this car. Clean it up a little bit, get them caps on. See what this thing's looking like. Car's running great. The more we run it down the highway, the better it's running. And sitting up ain't good for these rigs. Just gotta get them out on the road and I promise they're gonna do better for you. I better shut the lights off. I only got the one battery. So anyway, let's clean this thing up. I'm excited to see what it's going to look like here. Look at the difference already. No SOS pad, no scrubbing, nothing. Just pressurized soap. This thing could clean up really good. Just got to paint that front clip. Do something with the roof color there.
resale red. Looks really good. Nice old car. Well, the guy's not home yet. Still got some miles to put down. I'm gonna jump in, pull the wick out on her a little bit, let her run free, see if I can get home here in the next half hour, 45 minutes. Well, the 73 Pontiac Catalina officially has made it back to the barn. What an incredible day. This was a lot of fun. This thing wants to run. It didn't take much of anything, to be honest. And the day was just great. Cruising through the back roads of Tennessee today, even though it was rainy and foggy, it was just spectacular. You guys have got to travel this way. Avoid highways on whatever map system you're on, and I promise you, you're going to see the true America and you can even support some small businesses along the way and meet some great folks. The car is great. It's going to be a great car. We are uh, cruising along and all of a sudden the dash lights just turned on. A little while later the climate control lights turned on. About 10 miles from the house here, the wipers just started working. And I must have tried those 150 times today. Didn't check any fuses or anything like that. And all of a sudden, boom, they just turned on. It's like riding inside of... Christina, you know what I mean? Or Christine, I should say. If the radio came on, I probably would have just, you know, opened the door and bailed, though. You know what I'm saying? This one, I don't have to ask you guys what's next for it because the owner is picking it up this weekend. That's right, it's gone. But I'm very, very happy. The car is back on the road. It's roadworthy once again. It's doing what it should be doing and not just sitting somewhere rotting and that makes me very happy. Thanks guys for watching. Appreciate all of you so very much. And remember, your project won't work if you don't.